Hello and welcome to a feature video. In this we will be looking at Adobe Aero and how we can use Photoshop, Adobe Dimensions and Mixamo to create our custom augmented scene. So Adobe Aero, for those who may not know, is an application that is part of the Creative Cloud that, connect, that allows you to create augmented reality scenes very quickly and intuitively using a iOS device. Now, please note that if you do not have an Adobe CC license or a iPhone or iPad that is of a fairly new nature, this may not work. So apologies for Android users out there. So as you can see here, I am greeted with the welcome scene. I'm just going to create a new uh, project and I'm going to scan a flat surface. So in this case, I'm scanning this table. Once I'm happy with that surface, I'm just going to tap to place my anchor. And now if I just move my camera away and bring it back, you'll notice that my plane stays there. Now this does not in, uh, include occlusion. So any object that would be masked by, let's say this laptop screen here, would not be blocked appropriately. So please bear that in mind when you're creating your scene. Now the amazing thing about this is, is because it's part of the Adobe package, is we can click on the little plus button and this will link to our creative cloud. So Adobe Aero connects to um, Photoshop 2019 and 2020 uh, and Adobe Dimensions. So we can create our Photoshop image in the various layers and it would retain those layers and augment them into our scene. Set likewise with Adobe Dimensions. So I've been fortunate enough to be able to have access to Adobe Aero for a month prior to its release so I've been able to play about with it quite a bit uh, and what the beautiful thing about it is is it makes the whole process of creating an AR visualization so much easier and quicker than ever before using the AR kit. So I'm just going to for now use some starter assets and I'm going to add a plant pot to my scene so I'm going to choose my large planter like so. I can now see my object sort of in the scene at the moment it now wants me to place it so I can I'm just going to tap somewhere to place this and if I select that object I can scale it by pinching and scaling up and down like you would in a kind of fairly natural gesture if I want to rotate I would pitch, uh, twist and turn my fingers it's very hard to sort of emulate this and show you and if I want to elevate it I would use three fingers and swipe up and down to adjust its elevation layer now, this doesn't necessarily have to just be a static object. I can add behaviors to it. So by having the object selected, I can go to behaviors, add a trigger. In this case, I'm going to use a touch trigger, add an action. And in this case, I want it to spin. I can adjust its axis and its speed duration, etc. I'm just going to keep it as is. And now if I go to my preview window and I tap on that plant pot, it will now spin. So just to show you what I mean about occlusion, you notice that the laptop screen is not actually occluded the object. So I could add in more assets to this. Uh, so I could go to my Creative Cloud, uh, which may not connect uh, properly because I'm currently streaming this through my mobile device as a hub. So bear that in mind. Uh, and I can also use files that are local to my machine. So what if I wanted to add projects or files to my Creative Cloud and how do I get them to Aero? So I'm just going to go over now to my laptop See, Oops, sorry about that. There's a clattering of a chair. And I'm just going to come out of this for a second. Um, what, if, what if I wanted to add a person to the scene? So uh, as part of the Creative Cloud, you have access to this 3D and AR tab. And if we was to launch this web app called Mixamo, this is a fantastic website that includes some prefab characters and animations that we could then save to our creative cloud. So I'm just going to quickly log in. So I've now logged in to Mixamo using my creative cloud. And as you can see, there is a library of prefab characters. So I could choose 
Uh, let's try and find one that's quite uh, individually interesting, I suppose. Um, I could choose this sort of, oh, this character here, this ninja. And it'll, you'll notice it's already rigged up into the T-pose. If I simply go to animations, I can then choose one of the prefab animation styles. So I could, let's say, give it a uh, sort of a walk cycle or make it kind of do like a, let's see, what we quite, could give it like a hip hop dance. So you'll notice that this now applies this animation to our rigged model. We could adjust its uh, sort of values. And the fantastic thing about this is, is this Mixamo application, again, is free. It's part of the Creative Cloud. You can actually download this FBX model with the animation file and use it in Unreal. Or we can upload our own characters if they are rigged accordingly. What we're going to be looking at, though, is sending it to Aero. So if we select that, and I'll just press Send to Aero, with my Adobe Aero app already signed in, I would be able to now access this asset in my Creative Cloud and be able to preview it in my scene. So I'm just going to open up my Adobe Aero again, go to my scene that I've just created, to my Creative Cloud. I'm now back into the Aero. I can go to the Plus, go to Creative Cloud, and I should now be able to soon see my Ninja character in my library. This may take some time, depending on how good your internet connection is. So I'm now open up my Creative Cloud, and you can now notice my hip hop dancing.glb file is there. So this is my ninja. I can simply tap on him, select open, and this will now download it onto my uh, device to use in my AOC. And again, this may take some time, depending on your internet connection. So whilst I'm waiting for him to download onto my machine, I'm just going to quickly open up Adobe Dimension and show you that. So Adobe Dimension is used mainly for product pre-visualization or uh, adding our textures onto our 3D model and our scene. So in this case, I'm going to just create a new Adobe Dimension file. And I'm just going to use one of the prefabs. So I'm just going to use this beverage can like so. And with my beverage can selected, I can now go to the 3D object with the can. And then here in actions, I can place a graphic onto my model. So this is where I would create my asset or image in Photoshop. Uh, I'm just going to find a random image of my machine to use. So I'm going to just use this uh, galaxy image, for example. And once this is now imported, into my scene, I should be able to now place this graphic and adjust its scale, etc. Uh, let me just uh, double check this. So I've just uh, I've just double checked, uh, double clicked onto my uh, can again. Going onto can material actions, apply texture, and just applying my galaxy texture. And this hopefully will work, there we go. So this time, as you can see, it's now put it on as a, de a decal. I can now adjust its scale and wrap around my object. I could rotate it if I wish to, I could move it around my can, like so. I could change the material of my can so I can make it more rough, make it less uh, met metallic. I can even adjust the coloration of all my assets. Uh, I'm not going to go through Adobe Dimensions in this video too much. I'm just going to go through a very quick overview of how we can use it with Aero. And then I can simply go to File, Export, Export to Aero. And what this will now do is uh, I can give this a name. So I'm going to call this Cam. And this will now send it to my Creative Cloud. So now I'm back in a project Aero. After some time and struggling with Wi-Fi, I'm just going to add my ninja to my scene, like so. I'm also going to add my cam object I've just created in Adobe Dimensions, and add that to my scene, like so. I'm going to scale this down a little bit and place it as I want. Uh, this uh, because this uh, ninja has an animation, I'm going to select it, 
go to behaviors, add a trigger. In this case, I'm going to have a proximity and I'm going to make him play his animation and I'm going to make him play it infinitely. And now if I go to my preview window, as soon as I enter the proximity zone, it should start playing. But we will see if this uh, behaves. Okay, so that's not currently working, so I can go back to edit and just adjust that. Behaviors. I'm just going to change my proximity to be so let's see if this works. There you go. So now when I've entered that proximity, he will start playing and just doing his looping animation. So you can sort of see how we can start to build up our 3D scene. We can build up a highly uh, detailed um, AR product. And this is a, it also works with Photoshop. So if I go back to my laptop scene and I open up Adobe Photoshop, I can create my uh, scene so I could create a variety of layers and then once I go to export uh, within the newest version of Photoshop you'll notice you have this option called export for error if I just open that up uh, you'll be given two options one will be a flattened image which will just make it into a 2d plane uh, the one you would want to keep if you wanted to keep your layers as 3d objects to create that parallax effect is you'd want to make sure preserve layers is on simply hit export and this would now save it to your creative cloud and you want to call this something appropriately and you may notice that it also saves it as a .psd because it would .psd retains those layers for editable so I could always go back in later tweak those uh, layers and refine it as I see fit so this has just been a very uh, sort of brief overview of Adobe Aero, which I believe is a massive game changer for AR development and is going to make the production of AR scenes so much more intuitive and less code heavy. I've been Sue Fisher, this has been Michaela's channel. If you want to support my channel, remember to like and subscribe, and there is also a Patreon for those who want to gain uh, extra access to the content delivered, uh, created for these tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.